So somewhere between, what, 320 max at Grandis and Candace. Summer. I get home on Benio. 530. Summer vanished. I hear what I assume to be what my brain tells me is a suburban slamming up the fucking driveway at 530. But I didn't hear it go down. I only heard it go up. But then later on, I see Candace, and she's in Grandis' vehicle. Uh, and when Dawn finally comes in, he's in the super, which confuses the shit out of me. Because earlier, when I and my eldest did went out, and we seen a flash of red go up the driveway, and he just tells I was like, who was that? And he was like, it's just the neighbor's mom. But I knew the traction wasn't right. I knew the shit wasn't right on its spot. I even bothered to ask. I was like, I ask. And then it's not got clear coating or it's dusty or something wrong with it. And then later on, when Dawn shows up, right? Andy shows up. Monster shows up. You know, Dawn shows up. Cops. Hold on. Everything's colliding at once. And there's there's Dawn showing up in the Subaru, and it is so pristine, so shiny, so candy apple red, just clean as a fucking whistle. I'm like, holy shit! And well, the red up the. I'm so confused and lost. I know the time between the slam of that fucking door and the scream or whatever the kids and I heard that day. The first reaction is no, no, no. It's so fucking wrong. I try to excuse. I try to dismiss it any way I can. I'm like, man, it's one of the tree cutters who cut out early that day. But I was like, man. They've kicked one of Candace Nim's dogs because they got too close to see her, right? But I knew better. I knew it wasn't a dog. I knew it wasn't any of that. But my brain was trying anyway at all it could to explain it away. Anyway, fucking all. And I knew it had been such a lengthy amount of time. There was, there was no way that a straggler from the woodcutters or brushcutters was behind it. Because I tried to fit those things together. But the slam, just, just, my brain, it just... But where are those pieces all fit still? Who's responsible? And what has happened. So yeah, you passed a lot of detector tests. Going, yeah, we sent the boys down there with the director. Because you did, but not for... You now sent them down there because Don was supposed to pick them up. But people actually out searching. That's why you're so certain in this news piece and say... And I've wondered, I'm like, how in the fuck would you have known summer was gone before... I mean, there's no time for the boys. I know they didn't go back upfield to tell you, hey, it's clear, and summer this, or whatever that. So how in the fuck would you be like, well, we just hope nobody took them too. That would imply you already knew. But how the fuck you? And I kept thinking of it in a way that I was like, you know, n n we're not there searching. I and the other people searching for Summer did not hear Grandis yell once, but I know that supposedly she was hurt at some point. However, it damn sure was not, as I and others were around and searching for Summer after six or nine. So that tells me that most likely the bullshit call at 5.30 from the phone Candace tossed into the back of that vehicle might have a yell or two from Grandis on it. Probably inside the house or the camper, honestly. Which means that if at 5.30 you were calling law enforcement and tossing a phone into the back of the vehicle, pretending going, hey, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, click, tossing into the back of Dawn's vehicle, it means you knew well before 5.30 she was gone. Because it takes a while to figure out that your kid's not inside, you think, or where they're supposed to be. So I'd say well before 5.30 someone was gone. Right. Yeah, peppermints, washing hands, gardening, all the laundry. Oh, right. Groceries fill up today. All that could happen very quickly in just minutes. You toss in a load of clothes. You put three succulents down in a bucket. You know, you give her a piece of candy, you send her on back to the house, you all do whatever you were doing when she vanished. You realize she's gone. Boys are supposed to be keeping an eye on her, maybe. That's why the, what did you do? What did you do? Nothing, mama, nothing, mama, I swear. And then you spend the next four weeks before the boys are taking, terrorizing the shit out of the eldest. He's wearing the weight of the goddamn world. Making him feel like he's at fault somehow. Or not stuck. Occam's razor, though, right? I don't when you didn't know the words for, but you knew the description. It really is that simple. So now the question is, where in fuck is summer? Still a question. Still a question. Right? But that's how you pass polygraphs, too. Because it's close enough, right? There are yes or no responses, no nuances. Well, some of you passed them after a try or two, right? But then more were requested of you that you refused. And then you spent all this time trying to mimic and pair it and pull together pieces and trying to make it all fit with everybody else's. It breaks all your shit down. It's 
that's why you think the screen matters enough to use is hey, somebody took summer down the dog trail, so shit, right? Because you may firmly believe somebody took summer. But it doesn't quite fit into your timeline that you've tried to make because you all waited that long. And you can't quite make those things. Why you're so certain she's dead in the road that night? Not even a goddamn tear. Just a me. But why? Why such a bland response? Before that. Why do you wake them hours and then fucking audacity to start blaming Dudley and Fred and everybody else? Acting confused, playing the I don't remember, I forget, oopsies game. Right, much like the same shit our abuser did for <laughs> so very long to me until he finally knocked it off. Yeah, but now he's on that roll again. You can see that clearly online and everywhere else. But I, I, I've lived it, so I see it with y'all. And then the whole, well, the burnt soaps, playing dumb. That's why half the world thinks Candace has special needs. Bullshit. Time flies when you're having fun. Right? Your first worries are getting to Hunter to make sure he doesn't tell on you for this, that, and the other. Trying to eat discredit, use YouTube as forms of chaos, taint other people, witnesses, terrorize all the other children and witnesses to everything. And the witnesses who are most pure in this case are the children. Lips attacking Journey, who applies to the days before my children. Yeah. Who validate all your attack dogs like Cher, BK, everybody else, squall from the beginning, torment the ever living fuck out of everybody, trying to discredit, do whatever. Control goddamn chaos. Simple as that. And then money to boot, but who cares when you uh, when, when you brag throughout the years that you lost more kids than you actually had and smirk about it. Don't give a fuck. Never mention them. Never. I mean, really. Right? Don's the only one ever heard mention his kids that he had taken. I didn't even pay him whatever. He actually said he felt bad about it here and there, you know. He wanted to see him. He'd made contact with his son at a certain point. All this other shit. And it's, meh. Just about like Rose. She lied to me about Rose, too. Didn't know until after summer vanished that the truth about how she disappeared and under what circumstances didn't realize how tiny that town was too. At the very least tonight, I know my heart and my gut. In a firm way, not just one that. Because you, you gotta think, I've run through all these things a million times. More than that. They're always burning. Controlled chaos, scripts, something, right? But that little piece Josh played my And all I can do is hope that that's exactly what was told to Ellie. And there. Oh, wait. Yeah. There's a reason Grandma over here is certain that Summer was already gone, even though clearly nobody had time after sending the boys over the bank to know that Summer was gone and somebody took her. Right? There's a reason Dawn pops up on the phone after 609 going, so somebody took my baby girl. There's a reason for the phone thrown in the back of the vehicle at the top of the hill. There's a reason other things, many other things I know here, et cetera, throughout all this. There's a reason those boys were hunkered down. There's a reason they weren't acting right, not just for June 15th, but after. There's a reason for the what did you do, what did you do, nothing, mama, nothing, mama, I swear. There's a reason for all the bullshit, the chaos, the lies, the hoaxes that Candace and Dawn and these YouTubers have played, tormented, twisted, while they've acted stupid about shit, including the whole dogs was camping on our land, I was trying to find his camp, so that's when they knew damn good and well. That wasn't true. All these other things I found along the way. You got Candace over playing stupid pretending she was helping us move. Didn't know shit about a red truck. Trying to insinuate to other YouTubers and to Dawn that there had been a ladder rack on it, though. Well, how in the hell would you even speculate such a thing if you were telling Dawn at the exact same time in front of the YouTubers who happened to be recording weren't supposed to be that this, you know, first time, oh my god, should have been a red truck. But then she's like, oh yeah, there's a ladder rack at some point. And those things don't match. It's a lot. You're trying to cast out and all sorts of shit on everybody's trying to make Dawn believe it. All right, Candace? Okay. Right? That summer's vanished in, in your time. Thing is, who, which, what, where? Did Dawn come back and get her, thinking she'd be taken? Candace is oblivious. Just know she vanished on her watch. Dawn's likely to fucking kill her for it, and she's trying to come up with any other fucking person under the sun. You know, they can make look guilty, or like they've Dawn. done it. Dawn, it, you know, they're very spring, like they are, so they look guilty as shit, no matter if they did or didn't. So you point fingers, sling shit, sling jello. Right. Anybody else except back at 110, guests there, people there.
Does Candace know what happened to Summer? Or she just knows she vanished and that's Don's precious. Did Don come back get her? But I wear Candace didn't do it, and that's why Candace is not dead for losing his precious. Stranger, tree cutters, woodcutters, Dobbs, whoever the fuck was seen down there around the time Dobbs was or Dobbs was or whoever Dobbs said it searched for, you know, whatever the land for the mapping and the visit with him before when he changes his story 14 fucking times on that. As I'm left there fucking along with him on the 14th. Is it the red truck? Is it a red truck? Is it somebody to know? How long did y'all search before you gave up on it? And then still waited. To actually call. The thing for me is right now. Summer vanishes at 4, 5.30. But they wait that long. It means they already searched, right? Quite a search in the history of the universe. Until time suited and then the screams became really loud. Really whatever, attention grabbing, etc. Okay. Right? So wait, even it's scripted. No way. Because they already knew, they already knew she was going at five thirty. So, whatever search happened for summer to let them know she was gone, that heralded the call to Ellie and Dawn, whatever. And it was done a lot quieter. Somebody definitely went out of there because somebody definitely hit that hill going back up at five thirty. And then six or nine plus has people screaming. And there's the children and Candace come towards the top of the bank. He said, Is Candace screaming at him? What did you do? What did you do? Nothing. Nothing. I swear to God, those fucking words and sound will haunt me until the day I got in. Much like everything else. Because I still don't yet know what context, what I mean. But my gut says it's night. The minuscule amount of relief I feel is one thing tonight. I may be a little off more on but something about the tell me. How comes raising man? Thing is, I've heard Candace yell for some reform or not answer at least one other time. Man, it was loud as shit. So why was none of that happening between 320 and the rest of the day until? Right? Especially 320. It has to be somewhere before 530. Unless... Grandma says she takes a nap. No one is excited about the dog. And just as you just showed, it was just training his eye. Middle doesn't seem. Well, probably not. Maybe nobody did, but why wouldn't you yell just like you had before? She didn't answer at least. What was that screen? You have to creep off the hill at some point before 5 30. I hear. Go back up it.
Nah. Wait until Dear Dawn figures out Central aren't what he thinks they are, you know. Pretty sure people's time are coming to an end, at least for not reporting on time. And I guess that's just because I think that's a thing, right? All the pieces. Still yet. Still a window there. Where's some? Wow. How come it's Maybe Dolly Bear. Maybe. I don't know if they can do failure report stuff. It's just that amount of time. Hell, I could be wrong. My gut says tonight I'm not wrong. And at the very least, I ain't that wrong. What is it they said about? I just didn't believe it. What was he saying? Who played the I know it comes from the behavior panel breathes it some shit. I'm not a big fan of this. Even with their excuses and whatever third thing I've just now figured out been done. Hmm. Hmm. Good morning. She came out and took me to my into the ER. As everybody knows, I have a missing daughter. She's been gone for 12 years. And all I can say is, oh, God, not again. It's been almost a year and a half since Summer Wells went missing from her home in the Beach Creek community of Hawkins County. We have to prepare ourselves for a worst case scenario. You know, um, we could always hope for a good scenario, but, you know, it's, it can't be good because no matter what situation she's in, she's lost her freedom. Even if she's alive, she's, she's lost her freedom. She can't be seen in public. About a month after she was reported missing, her three older brothers were placed into DCS custody. We really want our boys back home. If, you know, if Summer was to be found today, we wouldn't be able to see her or talk to her. You know, and we can't talk to our boys. Were they in touch with Candace while you were in jail? Yes. Yeah. But did something change when you got out of jail? Um, the only thing that changed is suddenly we, we, I wasn't, we weren't allowed to contact them at all. Well spent a little more than eight months in the Hawkins County Jail for pleading guilty to a DUI charge. One of the guards gave me a copy of the New Living Translation Bible, so I found that to be about the best book. There was, so I, I, I read, so I, I read it several times because that's all there really was to do. And I was in 23 hour lockdown, so for my safety, they say. And since he was released from jail, Wells says it's been a challenge to gain custody back. They're doing nothing to help us. In fact, they're making us jump through all kinds of hoops, which is almost impossible to jump through all of them and hold a job and do all these things. They're making it real, real tough on us. Wells told us he has been in touch with investigators over Summer's case. There's not one shred of evidence. There's nothing. As much as they've looked and as much as the work of this they've done, they haven't been able to come up with anything at all. His wife, Summer's mother, Candace, has also been in and out of the hospital. Candace has been in the emergency room four times for heart problems and we're looking at eventually doing a major surgery hopefully to, to correct the problem with her heart. But she's doing better I think. Um, but all the stress and stuff it's not helping at all I don't think for sure. This weekend marks Summer's seventh birthday. It's just another day without her. I mean, I don't really want to celebrate her birthday without her. A time where he will wonder what she would be like as a seven-year-old. She was definitely going to be tall. She'd probably be as tall as me, I'd say, because she was growing so fast. And I'm sure she would be the same person and 